I'd like to welcome you to a new study that we have just begun. And it's the biblical truth of our hymns. And each week, Lord willing, we're going to try to do is we're going to look at our hymns. And we're going to study our hymns. And we're going to see if that hymn should be sung in a congregation church. Or should it be deleted? Because not all hymns in our hymnal are correct. Not all our hymns in the hymnal are biblically true. And we need to realize when a song leader or a pastor or somebody gives up before the congregation of church, we need to understand that first of all, there are three classes of people in the church. Saved, worldly, and lost. And we better realize that there will be a false witness report if people sing and they don't really mean what they sing. We really want to glorify God in our hymn sing. In these studies, I will hope that will help you in praising and glorifying God our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the second series, second part of the biblical truth of our hymns. Now before we start off in our second hymn that we've chosen, I got a book here that says What Do You Know About the Ten Commandments? And this is a very good book. I'm trying to find out where I can get more. It says if you wish to obtain additional copies of this booklet, please write to any address in the previous page. Now I don't know who wrote this, but it says Evangelist Dan Hati, Lighthouse Baptist Press local church publisher. This is a very good book. It's, it's, obviously it's designed for a gospel track. Very good. Go through the Ten Commandments of a lost man. So, let me pick up on page 40. <clears throat> Give them all the credit. I hope they don't get mad for me doing this. Commandment number three. And what it is, is it's the sinner, he's in a courtroom. And they've called for witnesses. And the witnesses are the Ten Commandments. So, commandment number three steps up. Took the stand, he said, Your Honor, my name is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. This man has done it. Frustrated and almost tearful, the defendant stood, this is a sinner, and said, Your Honor, I don't understand what this man is saying. I never use God's name in slang or swearing or cursing. I've never done something like that. I don't, I, I don't tell my children that... But I don't tell my children that that is God on roller skates on in a heavenly in heaven during a thunderstorm like some people would do. Why have I? Why? Because I have greater respect for God than them. And the witness jumped to his feet and said, "Yes, but last Sunday I heard you sing, just as I am. I come, I come, and you did never did." Ooh. He said, I heard you pray, Our Father which art in heaven, and he is not even your father. You've taken God's name in vain. I wish I was doing on series on prayer. The truth of God jumped up in the jury and said, I heard him saying in church on Sunday, My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. He doesn't love him, and Jesus is not his. He has taken God's name in vain, and the judge said guilty. Well, what about that? I found I read this book yesterday. I found this in my in my bookshelf uh, thing yesterday, and I picked it up and started reading it. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, some of our hymns are right, some of our hymns are wrong, and the ones that may be right, we're going to see over and over in a congregation of worldly Christians and lost men. We're going to make them liars. And not only liars, but according to this booklet here, this excellent book, What Do I Know About the Ten Commandments? He says there will be a charge against the name of God in vain. I never even thought of that. Imagine that. I come... I come and you stay in that seat. That's a lion, and that is that is taking the name of God in vain. 
Some of these songs are going to be great. Some of these songs are going to be wonderful. But not all of them. And in my opinion, a lot of these, some of these things are my uh, my pet peeves. You know, like where you talk about, you, you got five words, six words, seven words, and you sing it over and over and over. That's a pet peeve. Some of these things, I'm going to go with scripture. Some of these things, I'm going to just tell you, it's an outright lie with the Bible. So, let's look at our second hymn in this study. Come Thou Almighty King. Now, mine is in page four. And it's an English traditional hymn, the words. So, the nameless text dates from before 1757. I'll give you some history, too. America's erasing the history. When it was published in a leaflet and bound into it the 1757 edition of George Whitefield's collection of hymns for social worship. The text appears to be patterned after the British national anthem, God Save the King. So, Come thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing. And I'll, I'll relieve you guys, I won't sing. Sometimes some of these hymns though, you know, you can't help it. You want to read it, but you're your heart cries out singing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, or all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou almighty King, looking for the blessed hope, come into the Lord Jesus Christ as King. That's the second advent. That's great. Help us thy name to sing, whatever we do, even singing. As this study will show, we need God's help. And to see if what we sing is faithful and correct, or if it's unholy and need to be avoided. Help us, God. Help us to do right. Help us, God, to see the difference between evil and good. And let not our hymns say, that which is bad, oh, it's good. That which is good, oh, that's bad. Calling evil good and good evil is in the Bible and it's wrong and some of these people who get up in church and say let's sing hymn number 437 and it's anti-bible it's anti-scripture it's against God it's going to make a congregation one quarter of it and another quarter of it make them lie there's no prophet to God you're making his name vain and then thou shalt not bear false witness false witness you know, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. And you don't even pray five minutes. That's a false witness. And this book said, I come, I come, and you remain seated. That's a false witness. Come thou, incarnate, incarnate word. John 1.1. 1, 1. Gird on thy might, mighty sword. That is the word of God. That's one of our armors, which is the word. Our prayer attend. Come thy people bless and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness on us descend. It's calling upon God to help in everything we do. Which matches the Psalms cries for God to help. You already see now that this hymn, there's nothing wrong with this hymn. It's come thou mighty king. And we don't even have a name associated with it. Only God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the person that's writing this, and Satan know today who wrote this song. Come holy comforter. John, I think it's, I forget what verse, chapter. Thy sacred witness bear. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. He's a witness. That's what Jesus said. In this glad hour. Thou who almighty art. Now rule in every heart. And ne'er from us depart. Spirit of power. Father all glorious. Or victorious. Come and reign over his ancient of days. To thee, great one in three, eternal praises be. Hence evermore, 
Thou sovereign majesty, may we glory see into eternity love and adore. The Father all glorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Such Jewish flavor of the Messiah and King, ancient of days, Daniel 7. When Israel will be under Jesus Christ, king and glorious faithful saints will have their reigns with him. Now we're going to run into some hymns that are going to say, King Jesus of the church. We'll do that later. Jesus is never king of the church. He's king over Israel. So we have a hymn here. It's not only Christian flavor, but we have some Jewish spice. I don't think the writer of this hymn would, would curse Israel. I think he's asking God to bless Israel. He's got the word. He's read his Bible. He studied his Bible. Incarnate word, we said, John 1.1. 1, 1. Jesus Christ, mighty sword, the word of God. Hebrews 4, Revelation 19, again, the second advent passage. And yet the first advent. And then the Christian life present. This unknown writer is looking for Jesus. Who is God and who is to come back. And he wants him to come back. God the Father of Jesus Christ, Father all glorious. This writer is sure not a Jehovah Witness. You will not find the Jehovah Witnesses... I, sing this hymn unless they sing it in their kingdom hall lying because this hymn proclaims God is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is God and no Jehovah Witness will say that I've had them come to my door I've dealt with them the Jehovah Witnesses I've dealt with over a dozen of them will not proclaim Jesus Christ is God and yet this hymn does and the Bible does thy people Jewel yeah, Jewel Jews and jewels. They are the jewels of God. They're the apple of God's eye. They're the jewels. Come to bless the nation of Israel. Paul said pray for Israel. It's word success. Fulfilled all the word prophecies, Lord. Do, Lord. Be a doer of the word, Lord. That's what this writer, this is what this hymn is saying, the writer. Lord, do what you said you will do. Let it come to pass. And he's not saying, Lord, do it now. Oh, I hope it's now. I hope it's today. It's within time, Lord. You will fulfill your word. You will do your prophecy. And I am putting it in a hymn. I am putting Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, the Christian, the second advent, the word of God. Descend. 1 Thessalonians 4.16, Matthew 12.18, Ezekiel 37.14, Ezekiel 36.27. Isaiah 59 21, Isaiah 42 1, Numbers 11 29. This hymn smells so Jewish and a Jewish nation that will praise God one day. You know what I would do as a street ministry? I, I, I got a street ministry. I do it at, at a farmer's market here in Daytona Beach. And, and uh, we're, we're going out, venturing out at, uh, near the beach, near uh, a place called Ocean Walk. But if you want to have a Jewish ministry, I would take Come Thou Almighty King. And if you can find a synagogue where you can stand on the sidewalk and they can hear you, you get yourself someone who can play a flute, violin, and all that. No electric guitars or drums. If you could get people with instruments and good singing voices, a choir, it's a choir, yeah, forgive me, a choir, a group of people to sing. I would sing Come Thou Almighty King, the four stanzas. I would sing this in front of a Jewish synagogue. And I wonder if God would be able to do a work to them. I wonder if they would know their Old Testament so much that they could see. The Holy Comforter. Spoken by Jesus as the Holy Spirit. When Jesus would depart to the Father, John 14, 16, 17, and 15, 26, and 27, the scriptures proclaim, 
We have gone from the Old Testament. We're into the New Testament. We are in the promises of God the Father. We are in the promise of Jesus Christ the Son. Remarkable. The heart. Romans 10. It's not in the head. It's not a head religion. It's not what I think religion. It's not what I thought about religion. It's in the heart. But into our hearts. Never depart. We got him here of the security of the believer. Oh, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know if I lost it. Oh, pick up your Bible, read your Bible, pick up, come down, Almighty King, and sing it. Sing it. Read the word. Break out that sword. Slice away those doubts. Slice away, you know, am I saved? Am I not saved? Can I lose? Slice it away with the word of God and put the joy in your heart with this wonderful hymn. I told you, all oh, not going to be bad, I'm saying. All, all these we're going to go through will be good and will be bad and will be on the border way. Power. Luke 135. John 16, 7 through 11. Romans 8, 16. I'm going to leave you to look up these verses. If you really are a student of the Bible, if you are really to do what the Bible says, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. I hope you will pause and you will go look at these passages. Write them down, then go look them up. I could be wrong. Email me if I'm given the wrong passage, please. And I may be able to correct it. But look them up. Let you do a little work. The Trinity, eternal praises, tells the future of the worship of God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It will never end. It never comes to an end. When was the last time your church sung this hymn? And we're going to go through a lot of them. Now, like I said, i got a hymn note right here. And... I'm up to hymn number 100, and I've only got 25 hymns so far. So we're not going to do them all. No way we could do them all, and you would know them all. Um, if you want to, you can email me with a hymn that you think is bad, you think is great. What? And if I already don't do it, or I will look into it when it comes across in the book. But when was the last time this hymn was hung? You know, this is a great one. This one glorifies God. This one smells of Jewish. If you were to take a hymn and think of it as a pot on a stove, it's got the Christian in it. It's got the Jewish flavoring of spices. It's got the main meal of God the Father. Oh, it's got the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's got the witness of the Holy Spirit. I said, listen, if you want something to do, you don't have a ministry. And, and I get a group of people together. I would, if, like I said, some of these places today, they're hard. Because you can't go on their property. The Jewish synagogues around here, because I've already looked at it. So the Jewish synagogues I got around me, and if you were to stand on the sidewalk, they're, they're 300 miles away. Like a Walmart, stand on the sidewalk, and it's 300 miles away. Even with it with a uh, amplifier device, it's they wouldn't be able to hear. But if you got a Jewish synagogue that is by a, a sidewalk, somewhere where you can stand legally, and I want you know you're not going to have amplification for every singer. But if there is that such thing that God's graced you with in your area, that you can be. I would take this hymn to a Jewish synagogue and I, excuse me, I would sing it. Because it starts off Jewish. They might like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds like the Old Testament. And then it slowly goes into Jesus Christ. Into the Holy Spirit. By the time you would get to stanza two, you already stand witness of God the Father. Stanza 2, Jesus Christ. Stanza 3, the Holy Spirit. They know who the Holy Spirit is in the Old Testament. And then 4, go to a Jehovah Witness uh, 
hall. And they can hear you where you can stand on a sidewalk, on a public place, without breaking the law. And break forth the fourth verse in loudness of singing that Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. If I had a singing voice, I could take, come thou almighty king. And respect to the people I preach at the front, I could not sing this, this, this hymn for one reason. I got a terrible singing voice. Oh, if I could get help, if I could get people who has a good singing voice, I would take this hymn to the farmer's market that I preach Saturday morning. I would open up in a hymn, or I would preach and then close with it, however the Lord would have it that day. This would be one of those hymns. This is a hymn that ought to be sung in the churches. Come thou, almighty King, help us thy name to sing. Help us to praise. Father, all glorious. Or all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. One problem. One problem, though. And you're going to find this problem mostly with most hymns. Now, I'm thinking right now that this is a new thought that came to my head. Is it the hymn? Or is it the light of the scene church age is the problem here? See, Let's take a worldly Christian. Stands at one. You live in the world. I don't know why you go to church, but you go to church. You're worldly. You don't want anything, you know, life with Christ. Mom and dad drags you out. You're there because your wife, you know, you want to please her. You're there because, you know, your husband is the, the, the household head and he makes everybody in the family. Whatever. You're a worldly Christian. You're in church. All right, everyone, get up and stand up. I mean, Open your, your hymnals to uh, number four. As a worldly Christian, come thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Can you see a worldly Christian singing that hymn? And what did I say? You are making the name of God vain. And you're a false witness. What worldly Christian would say, come thou almighty king? Again, he's not the king of the church. But the second advent, he will be king of king, lord of lords, and king over the, over the millennial kingdom. Jesus Christ comes. And as God is Jesus, and Jesus is God, God comes. But what worldly Christian would want this? Let's see. Um, part of the worldly Christian. All right, let's sing stanza two for the world of Christian. Come thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword. Our prayers attend. Eh, worldly Christians got prayers, cardinal one. Come thy people bless and give thy word success. All right, a cardinal Christian. Word success, going all the worlds and preach the gospel. Stop sinning, repent, and get right. Do not be un unequally, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Tell your unsaved family, no, I'm going to serve God. That is the word success. Not for a worldly Christian. Now let's take the other one, the third party. Because we're already blessed those who save and love the Lord and trying to do right. They're not perfect, but they're striving. All right, we already talked about that. Let's take the unsaved person in church. They've been invited out by a Christian. Uh, they're walked through the door. However, an unsaved man comes into the congregation. Now, here's the problem. Is it the him? Or is it that the church is allowing the unsaved to come in? I had a Facebook thing the other day about this. Is it wrong? Do unsaved 
men and women coming to the church get saved. Yes, they do. All right. But you got to know there are people who attend a church and tend a church and tend a church and tend a church. They will tend a church till they die. And they're not saved. There are churches all around Daytona Beach where I live right now. And they're full of unsaved men and women, and they have an hymnal. There are more lost people than there are saved people in those churches. And they have a hymnal. And if across the song leader or the pastor will say, okay, in this one, song number four. An unsaved man stands at two. Unsaved man. Come thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword, our prayer of ten. Come and thy people bless, and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness on us depart. All right, give thy word success. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This hymn... For that lost man would be a false report and it would violate using God's, it would be a violation of God's name taken in vain. I like, I, I saw that. I found that. Is, okay. So what should we do? Stop singing? This is what I think you should do. Your song leader, listen up. Congregation, we're gonna hit, we're gonna sing hymn number four. And this will be the first hymn. And maybe you have another hymn, but, but this this is what ought to be said. If you're a worldly Christian in this congregation, and you have not served God to the fullest, and you you don't really want to serve God to the fullest. You better be careful what you read. You better be careful what you sing. If you can't sing this, knowing in your heart that you are not right with God or right with God, you better not sing it. Better not sing the hymn than sing it and be found guilty before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, a note to those in this church that have not believed on Jesus Christ. They're not saved. They're visitors. You have never come to know Christ as your Savior. We are going to sing this hymn. I think some of these hymns need an introduction before. I think we also should have, you know, explaining some, some of the stories behind it. Some of these stories of these hymns are going to be remarkable stories. And you know that some of these hymns that we sing in the churches are Roman Catholic? Did you know that? You continue to listen to, to this study on our hymns. You will find that the people who wrote these hymns are Roman Catholic. Some of these hymns were written for the Mass. But let's get back to the lost man. I would make, I would say... Those who have not trusted Christ as their Savior have no idea even what we're talking about. I would ask that while we sing this hymn, I would ask that you read the words in your heart to get to know that the, the, the God of the Bible, the God of Jesus Christ who suffered and died for your sins. Read the words as we sing. Notice the people around it, how they are joyfully singing this hymn. Do you have? Would you have that joy? Would you be so happy? Anything wrong with that? Would that be wrong, or is that opinion of mine that that stinks? That we should be forth through the congregation. Those that are saved, glorious, sing out aloud. Those that are worldly, be careful. Those who have never been saved, read. 
But we think, oh, if we sing out to God so all heaven can hear us. And the God of heaven is sitting in heaven saying, I hear a bunch of worldly Christians lying to me. He sits in heaven and I hear a bunch of unsaved reprobates who are condemned already taking my name in vain. Almighty King, Incarnate Word, the Comforter. The Comforter. That is the name that Jesus Christ gave to the Holy Spirit. And you're going to have a lost man say and sing, Holy Comforter. Here's an unsaved man standing before a courtroom. Commandment number three took the stand. He said, Your Honor, my name is thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And the defendant fights and, and you know fights God and fights the person and all that. And The witness jumped to his feet and said, Yes, but last Sunday I heard him saying, Come thou almighty king. God, he didn't want you to come. God, that would be the last thing that that man would want for you to do. I got a Facebook post that he, that he put on his wall. No, wait, Lord. The truth of God jumped up in the jury and said, I heard him sing in church Sunday, Come thou almighty king. And he don't want you. He don't even know you're coming. And the judge would say, Guilty. So, do you want your congregation stand before you and the judge say, Guilty? Or do you just want a loud, nice song service? Or do you want the truth? See, we, get, we as Americans today, we've got to have vast numbers of people. We can't settle for the few. Many will go the broad way that leads to destruction, but few will go through the straight gate. Do we really need many to sing our congregational songs, or do we just have the few that are saved and sing it out of joy? We're gonna move. This is the second hymn we're doing in this study. There'll be more to come. There will be hymns that I say should not be in the hymn book. Being in a hymn book would be a sin. Some of these hymns. Some of these hymns, again, are going to be questioned. All right. There's the Jewish. There's the Gentile. And then there's the saved man. There's God. There's Jesus. There's the Holy Spirit. There's a nation of Israel. There are uh, the nations. And there's the church. There's the Old Testament, there's the Gospel, there's the New Testament. Everything works by threes in God's numerology. And so, song leader, when you get up, you got threes you're looking at. When you're looking at the congregation, you got three sets of people in there. You got people who are truly saved and love the Lord and want to do right. Those are the ones you ought to be focusing on. Number two, you got worldly Christians for whatever reason they're being there. Number three, you got unsaved men. Maybe the first time they've been there, or they've been there their entire life and they're lost. And they think that just going to church or giving money or being a membership of that church, they think that's their way of salvation, which is false and which will damn them to hell. Some of these hymns might go to the second people, class of people. Some of these hymns might, you know, let's get these worldly Christians, let's get them serving, let's get them excited, let's do, make them, help them grow. 
That's a possibility, isn't it? You got three ordinances out there. Now, Sunday morning, that's when the most of the unsaved will come out. And the world. And there's a third classification you can pick a hymn out. We're only the second one. That would be the time to pick a hymn that is about the salvation grace of Jesus Christ alone. But I would make that warning again that this hymn we're going to sing is about the salvation, is about the blood of Jesus Christ, how Jesus saves in Jesus alone. And if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, and this is we're going to swallow your pride, I ask you not to sing the hymn. I ask you to read the hymn while the congregation sings. Let the congregation sing and mellow this into their heart while they read in their heart. And maybe Jesus Christ will do something. You can't set forth a lie of Satan, John 8, 44, and expect God to bless it. But oh, how lies have crept into the church. You will explain to that lost man what's going on. You might have planted a seed in his heart. That worldly Christian... You know, you just get, okay, hit number four. Do you realize he's going to stand before God? Every idle word Jesus says in Matthew, man shall give an account. And listen, as great as come thou almighty king, for a worldly Christian, this is just idle words. Isn't it not? A man who's not doing right, who's not living right, Will you fight me and say that these are not idle words if you were to sing this hymn? And then for those that are saved and trying and doing and loving and seeking God, those will be the ones that charm the ears of God and put a smile on Jesus Christ. They're singing about us, Father. Hear it. They're singing about us. But there's a strange noise in the background isn't there yeah. I hear the one sing but there's a strange noise in the background when you read about David setting up the Levites and the singers and instruments do you think David would set up in the courses described in as the first chronicles or second chronicles do you think David would put men in that position that did not love God do you think David would put a man to play a harp just because, oh, look at me, I can play the harp. Look how well I can do it. Look at me, everybody, I can. Do you think David would set up those men? David was a man after God's heart. David loved the Lord with all his heart. And I think David would stand up in your church service and open up the hymn of the congregation. I guarantee he would set forth. The three classes of men. The saved, the worldly, and the unsaved. I guarantee it. So this song, this hymn, Come Thou Almighty King, unknown whoever wrote it. Praise God. Maybe, I, I don't know if he's still alive. 1757. <laughs> I doubt he's still alive. And do you see him at the throne of God today before the Lord Jesus Christ when him, him when his hymn is sung by those that really mean it? And he sees God smile. He sees Jesus listening to his hymn by those that are truly saved and trying to do right. And then that noise of those other two classifications. There are three classes of people in your church. They're saved and know it and love it. They're saved and they don't care. And they're not saved. What a beautiful hymn. Too bad it has to be ruined by the worldly and unsaved. Isn't the rapture going to be great? 
The rapture is going to separate us from the from the unsaved. Only those that are saved in Christ will, will go up in the clouds. That's great, isn't it? No lost people. The people in my family that have rejected Christ and the friends that I've known that rejected Christ. My co-workers that have rejected Jesus, they're not going up with me. And they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Stay. I've been years preaching at the farmer's market. You don't want to listen to Jesus. You don't want to do right. Stay. But I'm going to preach until he comes. Or until the Lord takes me home. That you might get saved. But it, when the rapture comes, you didn't want Christ, you stay. Those that did want Christ, we go. Bye. And then at the judgment seat of Christ. All the Christians will be judged. Our works will be put before the fire. Wood, hay, or stubble. Silver, gold, precious stones. And after that judgment, the crowns and rewards have been handed out. Then we will be one body, one unit as the church. There will be no more worldly Christians in that gathering. Some will have crowns, some will not. Some will suffer. But when we get to heaven in New Jerusalem, there is no more unsaved, no more worldliness. Then we can pick up the hymnal, and then we can sing to the glory of God. Some of the hymns make me sick. Some of the hymns I was reading, the reading verses, I was like, that ain't scriptural. The hymns that say that, you know, that the wise men that came to Jesus in the manger, they're not scriptural. So we'll close there. Lord willing, next week, the third one. What is it? Give you a little surprise. I'm not going to tell you. Come back, Lord willing.